Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR news for July 27th. So before I launch into the news, I got a question for you guys. I'm just really curious because it kind of dawned on me today. I have not played any 2D, uh, and by that I mean 3D on a 2D monitor games since my first original Vive arrived. Arcade Machine doesn't count. I do that as much as I can, but I consider that almost a separate experience. But in terms of actual games on a PC or a console, the few that I've tried to pick up, like Dark Souls 3, where I left off before my Vive came, I just haven't been able to get back into. I play about two, three minutes, and then I'm like, you know what? Time to go VR again. And I just can't get any traction. And I even forced myself at one point because I was thinking, oh man, I don't want to burn out on VR stuff, so I'm going to force myself to do some 2D. It's pretty sad when you got to force yourself to game, right? But even that didn't work. I'd still rather be doing VR. So where are you guys at? And only if you feel like answering 50-50, right? Um, like me, just doing VR or the exact opposite, haven't touched your VR unit since you got it and desperately watching this channel and others for, you know, content or discussion about something that will get you to try it again. So uh, let me know. I'm really curious with that question. Not quite yet answered, but moving on, let's get to the news. So there is a programmer, his last name is Johnston. He works for a company called Pickpock, which is a New Zealand dev, right? Uh, mobile game studio. And he's been a lifelong fan of Blade Runner. And for me personally, I mean, I mean, I'm a huge Harrison Ford freak to start with, but I loved Blade Runner. And I loved Blade Runner before it became the cool thing to love. I loved it when I was 10 years old and the damn movie came out kind of love, right? It was always a movie that I liked because I loved that future kind of cityscape and, you know, the flying cars, the whole bit, right? The futurist uh, portions of that movie. Well, this guy has created an app that's basically looking out of a balcony at the top of one of those really, really high Blade Runner rental buildings, right? So you're way up there. You look down, you can look around. I'm going to try it. I just downloaded it. And yeah, you're basically looking out the window or on a balcony. So I'll, I'll find out if there's more you can move around. But all the ambience of a future modern city is kind of there to soak in. So you got city sounds happening. It's one scene, but there's a lot of crap happening on that one scene. So definitely it piqued my interest. Is it something I would pay for? They'd have to be pretty good. Um... Like if it was that experience that I talked about, I believe in yesterday's video, uh, the um, company that's creating VR experiences, like one room experience type things or one offs. Yeah, I could see it within that context, right? As kind of like uh, an alternative to wallpaper, if you will, that if you put your visor on, you can kind of live in that moment. If not, it's just animated wallpaper, right? But anyways, Blade Runner, yeah, so you're looking out the balcony and you're seeing all that stuff. I don't know how random it is. I don't know how much actually happens if you see everything there is to see within the first few seconds. Not sure, but I'm going to find out. So that was on Road to VR. I'll link that in the description below if you guys are curious. Check it out. If not, pass it by. Now, next, Project Boundary is a new sci-fi shooter for the PlayStation 4. And what caught my attention was the multiplayer aspects. So it's basically a first-person shooter. It was announced for Sony's VR headset at the PlayStation press conference. Uh, there's a video of it. Believe that the video is showing the non-VR version, right? So keep in mind, I'm talking about the VR version. So if you look at that video, I don't even know if that represents the VR game, right? But um, yeah, so it's going to come in those two flavors, VR and non-VR, but it looks really good. Um, it looks like it'd be a lot of fun, kind of not Destiny, not, um, I'm trying to think what it looks like. And maybe that's part of the charm is it didn't look like 
anything else, even though FPS games have been done to death, right? Uh, it looked fairly unique. So go check that out if that interests you and keep an eye on that one because that'll be out for the PlayStation 4. Now the next story, holy crap. I was uh, shocked, not surprised, but shocked. I mean, I'm used to paying for very expensive computer equipment. Servers I purchase tend to be between 12 and 20,000. Uh, so, I mean, I'm used to a fairly big purchase, but Facebook has just released an instructional. I don't know if they did directly. The There's links in the link that I'm gonna provide that go into more detail on that. But it's a video that shows how to build the camera that they're basically using for their 360 content. And it can be yours for the low price of $30,000. So if you got 30,000 laying around, screw being productive, put this camera together. That's a whole new level of productive, right? Yeah, no, I, $30,000 on a 360 camera, I think I'll pass. That can buy you a lot of cool stuff. Imagine if you got that 30 grand and all you could spend it on was hobby, game hobby related. It had to be. That was the catch. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. And there's still no way in hell I would consider the 360 degree camera because I could spend that 30,000 pretty nicely. My guess is most of you could too. But with that said, it's still kind of neat to look at the way they mount it. And there was a comment from somebody. What did they liken it to? The, uh, oh yeah, the world's most awkward spinning top or something like that because it literally the top of it looks like a spinning top the ones that you would pull the string out of and you know they dance around on the pavement so thirty thousand dollars if you've got a laying around you want to build your own 360 camera they will throw in the software you will get the software for no extra charge so there's always that but like i said i'll pass the Next news bit has to do with a company that's looking to build chargers for the Vive controllers. Now, the Vive controllers just use, you know, USB connections. And you can actually buy the female versions of that from electronic stores online. You could probably build your own docking station. But anyways, these guys have a Kickstarter. And I'm not dissuading you and saying, go build your own. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying what they're building isn't very technical, right? Uh, it's a cool mold, plastic, you know, injected mold. It looks very cool, but at the end of the day, it's basically extension cords for your USB. Really, that's what it is, right? So still handy because I agree with the author. One of the comments he had was, they always die at the most inopportune times because you can only really see the charge in the app, you don't see it on the controller. Now, I think the light does something, but it's not the bars. You're not seeing the bars on the controller, right? So you use, 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 and then suddenly it just dies in the middle of the game because you've got so much going on, you're not paying attention to the battery readings, right? So the chargers from that point of view, I think are, are kind of cool. But it almost, like if you were serious about using those controllers, like when there's a lot of gaming to be done and you have a lot of time on your hands, I'd almost want to have two sets of controllers, which sounds overkill, but it's not like with a 360 or PlayStation gamepad. You can charge one, use the other, because uh, you're only using two when you do multiplayer. With Vive and Rift, you're using both at the same time, right? So it's not like you could just buy one extra spare. You pretty much have to double up, right? Two to four. But uh, still, you know, they got a Kickstarter and... Uh, the, like I said, the product looks okay. It just doesn't look fantastic and awe-inspiring because at the end of the day, it's a beautiful mold at the end of a couple of USB extension cords, right? So, but if that's the kind of ease of use and charging that you want, there you go. The next article is a cool one because it has that same theme that I've been hammering to death on a lot of these videos where we talk about all those other aspects of VR, whether it's music, whether it's physics, all that kind of stuff, right? Those are all things that need to happen in VR aside from increasing resolution, right? And speed and optimizing 
we've got to have better technology in all these other areas. So these guys have created a proof of concept, right? It's a PhD student. I believe it's just one, not actually a group of guys or gals, but one PhD student at Queen's University in Belfast who built the proof of concept slash prototype, right? And basically it looks like an assembly line robot with, you know, the arm appendage that, you know, will spray glue onto a car part on an assembly line. That's kind of what it looks like, except picture like a wooden board on the end of its arm, right? So you've got, and I'll include the link, but think of it as a small rectangular board. So in their demo, you're pushing with your controller a wooden box. Well, you're doing that against the robot. So I don't know what kind of practical use this would really have for gaming. It would have to be very specific gimmicky situations. I don't think it would be that successful in gaming as a result, at least delivered in that way with that specific technology. I'm not saying there aren't better ways to do it. I just don't think that would be the ideal way to do it for PC games, right? Or VR games. You'd really need to change it up and incorporate it a little differently, like develop that technology a little different. But for the purpose of this, it was kind of cool that at least somebody's looking at it. And like with all the other stuff that I've talked about, the fact that somebody is looking at it is a good thing because all those somebodies are going to add up and make VR better, which is just awesome for all of us. The next item is for the artists. The artists who... You know, whether it's traditional media, whether it's a digital tablet, whether you're in the game industry or not, uh, you may appreciate this. It's an application called Sketchfab. And the company that creates it has basically made it compatible for all the HMDs on the market right now. The big players, not all, because we know China alone has 40 plus. The big consumer players worldwide, right? And they currently claim half a million members and nearly 1 million experiences. And the experiences, kind of like the Blade Runner idea, right? It's one scene, one location. So I can kind of, I can see the merits of that in a, in a way. <laughs> it's just, it's delivered a little less than ideal, right? Like I know where they're going with that and where I think they're going with that if you read the article is it's almost a repository like a GitHub, right? For code, except for art or the name escapes me uh, where you can get all the Unity art, right? And the Unity set pieces, similar to that, but for virtual reality. And I think that's great because there are no real standards right now for, you know, the VR objects that I'm aware of, like there are for 3D objects, right? Like there's no kind of tag that encompasses all that information. So having a tool that allows devs to see their VR models, right? Uh, walk around them, teleport around them, position them is a really cool idea for helping them develop. I don't know how different that would be from developing on their own HMD, but, um, the fact that you can share the resources with others, I think is the big benefit there. The last thing I wanted to talk about has to do with VR being on the cusp. And this came from kidscreen.com uh, when I was looking up virtual reality stuff earlier today. And they basically, that was the headline, VR on the cusp. And that was it. So of course your next thought is on the cusp of what? <laughs> what are we on the cusp of or what? you know, more to the point, is VR on the on the cusp of. And they basically explained that while all the tech giants are pretty much involved, right, the manufacturers in with VR at some point, right, HTC, Samsung, Sony, Nintendo, uh, I think I mentioned Samsung, but you get the point. A lot of the big players are already involved in virtual reality. One of the things that the article talks about is the kid market. And that's such a good point. And it doesn't get talked about a lot. But look at it in terms of Pokemon Go. Yes, while I know it's not a game just for kids, right? 
it's a game that kids have made hella popular, like extremely popular because it appeals to them. And it has that Wii magic. And what I mean by Wii magic is, remember that console sold to everybody. Every demographic was buying the Wii because it was, you know, the system that could bring the family together around the TV, right? Meanwhile, sure, you know, you could do lawn bowling with your grandma, uh, you know, or play, you know, croquet or whatever. But it wasn't really a hardcore gamer thing. So say they, I'm just pulling a number here, say they sold 30 million Wii's, I think it was closer to 100 million by now or 100 something, but whatever. Let's just say 50 million. They sold 50 million Wii's. 15 to 20 million of that was the real gamer demographic. And I hate saying real gamer, but you know what I mean? In the context of, of that type of game, like a gem game, pay to play, browser, Facebook game, right? They're of course they're games. They're just not what I would classify as a mainstream gamer or hardcore gamer, right? Like my mom, she plays the jeweled game on Facebook. That in no way makes her a gamer. She doesn't do anything else, understand anything else, want to do anything else, right? So having an app like Pokemon Go in VR that appeals to kids and all age groups would be awesome. And it doesn't even have to be a killer app. It just has to be damn good. If it can attract you know, from all demographics in the same way as Pokemon Go did or a similar way. It doesn't have to be the same formula, right? Obviously a different formula. That's what VR needs. And that's what I hope we see getting closer to the holiday season is a bit of a focus on the kid side of it too. Don't get me wrong. I want my adult content and I want lots of it, but I can appreciate the power of kids and their dollars, which are really their parents' dollars, but you get my drift where I'm going with that. All right, guys, it is time for other things. Hope you guys uh, found something useful in the news today. If not, we will try again tomorrow. If you did, cheers. Well, cheers either way. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy the game and tonight.